On this week's spooky edition of What's Up Weekly, take a trip to the barn of terror as haunted houses around the area get ready for the home stretch of the spooky season. And we've got your Halloween weekend plans covered with some festivities around Bloomington and Monroe County. What's Up Weekly starts now. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of What's Up Weekly. I'm Anna Black. And I'm Kelly Lichter. And Anna, last year I had my birthday taping and this year it's yours. I so know, right? how do you feel? I mean, I'm feeling 22. <laughs> also, Hannah Montana costume. Um, I mean, it's just like a fun episode and um, I'm just happy to be here. Spending yeah, it so I guess we do have to address the elephant in the room. <laughs> um, it is our Halloween episode and we are dressed up in costumes. So what are you dressed up as, Anna? So I'm Hannah Montana. Um, as some of you might not know, may know, the hit Disney Channel star. And I did like channel her as a child and I really thought I was going to be her. It was like, call me Anna Montana. So <laughs> we're Anna Montana tonight. What about you? And in true woo tradition, it has to be a matching costume. Absolutely. So I, of course, am Lily Prescott, who is Miley Cyrus, Anna Montana's best friend on the show. So we have a great show in store today. Rocket Homes has recently named Bloomington, Indiana as the number one place for viewing autumn colors in the Midwest. Let's hear more from reporter Madison Rinbarger, who took a trip to Brown County Park. Bloomington, Indiana was voted the number one Midwest city to view fall foliage by Rocket Homes. Just a short drive east is Brown County Park, where I'm reporting from. So I took to the streets of Bloomington to see what residents think about fall. Uh, I'm going to be Jordan Belfort and Ken for Halloween. Suki from Fast and Furious. I do not know yet. Uh, my favorite Halloween candy is probably Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Um, Laffy Taffy's. Uh, Reese's. Because it's really pretty. Uh, the trees are growing nice and the weather's pretty nice too. Well, I love fall in Bloomington because it's so pretty here and all the leaves. Um, fall off the trees and I just love the weather and being outside uh, during the fall before winter. I, don't, I like walking outside, being outside during fall. Apple picking. Favorite fall activity, probably carving pumpkins or trick-or-treating. The article ranked Bloomington so high because visitors have so many ways to immerse themselves in fall. The percentage of metro area covered in trees with leaves that change color, freezing temperatures relating to plants, and the area's elevation. Some fall activities in Bloomington include Fowler Pumpkin Patch, Hickory Ridge Fire Tower, Hoosier National Forest, Starlight Drive-In Theater, Rose Hill Cemetery, Barn of Terror, and of course, trick-or-treating on Halloween. For Southern Indiana, peak fall foliage viewing time started on October 20th and goes through until the end of the month. So be sure to get on out there and enjoy your Halloween. For What's Up Weekly, this is Madison Renbarger. The Jill Behrman 5K Color the Campus Run took place last Saturday here in Bloomington. The race honors the late Jill Behrman, a former IU student who was murdered while on a solo bike ride. The run takes participants through IU's campus for 2.8 miles starting and ending at the Student Recreational Sports Center. Saturday's event included the color powder race, a dance warm up and free food, snacks and drinks at the finish line. A volunteer group called Hoosier Source Rex has made its way through the Bloomington community, tying social events with dinosaurs. This Halloween, they plan to have the biggest dinosaur themed night in Bloomington. What's Up Weekly reporter Carly Flanagan tells us about Hoosier Source Rex and their plans for the big 31st. Hoosier Source Rex is a nonprofit organization in Bloomington that displays dinosaurs at many local events. Halloween is a big time for Hoosier Source Rex as many families volunteer their front yards to set out dinosaur displays and candy for trick or treaters. Hoosier Source Rex started in 2016 and was initially to have fun with dinosaurs. But as they grew, many nonprofit organizations and small businesses started asking Hoosier Source Rex to participate in their events. Eric Diamond, the event coordinator and senior dinosaur handler, says that while mostly it's still random dinosaur related nonsense, there is also emphasis on nonprofits, small businesses, and even weddings. 
We're an all-volunteer organization. Anything fun that you want dinosaurs to be included with, which in my opinion should be everything, we want to work with you to to do that just to help uh, promote our local community and the good things in it. Dinosaur handlers like Eileen DeVoe say that children love the dinosaur events and that it makes them happy to see other people elated over Hoosiersaurus Rex. One handler, Vicki Loring, enjoys how Hoosiersaurus Rex has been able to connect to the community and help make a difference. My favorite thing is just how much fun it can be. It's dinosaurs and nonprofits and ways to gain exposure for some of these nonprofits and to do it in a really fun, loving way to especially do good for a community. And I think that that's what this organization is all about. Be sure to follow their Facebook page for any updates and don't forget to catch them on Halloween this year. If you end up going, remember that Hoosier Source Rex is located in a busy neighborhood and to be safe when driving as there are trick-or-treaters out. And to any and all IU student groups that are looking to spice up their theme nights, reach out to Hoosier Source Rex for a fun and eventful night. For What's Up Weekly, I'm Carly Flanagan. Thanks, Carly. Their Facebook page is named Hoosier Source Rex, and you can follow them to stay updated on all of their events. Still ahead on What's Up Weekly, Carson Johnson takes us to Barn of Terror and gets a look at how they are preparing for the final sprint of the season. And later, Austin Rubin and Simon Mayer are back in the studio with a brand new Bloomington Brief. Stick with us. Welcome back. Since it's Halloween season, we couldn't not talk about haunted houses. Our Woo reporter Carson Johnson visited the Barn of Terror for us. And I mean, I covered the Barn of Terror my freshman year, mm -hmm. so I'm really excited to see how they've spooked it up for this season. Yeah, I personally couldn't go through and do this. My, the camera would be shaking, it would be black, so I applaud him for doing that. So let's take a look. It's Halloween season, and you know what that means? Haunted houses. The Barn of Terror is one of Bloomington's premier Halloween attractions. Jared Neal is the owner of the barn, and he gave some insight about what it's like to own a haunted house. It's very busy this time of year. I mean, we've got a lot of staff we have to keep ready to go, and obviously a lot of people we need to make sure get what get their scares worth. So, And get their scares worth, they do. When customers are waiting in line to go into the barn or paying a visit to the merch stand, they can expect a visit from a chainsaw-wielding clown or even Pennywise himself. People watching this, I wish you a happy Halloween! <laughs> the Barn of Terror is ranked the sixth best haunted house in Indiana and draws thousands of customers each year. Um, it definitely was very spooky. Um, you might see a few children running behind us, falling, and that, that's because there's chainsaws, people with chainsaws chasing after them. The barn is in its 15th year of operation and offers the traditional haunted house experience as well as a restaurant, trick-or-treating on Halloween, and zombie paintball for those who would prefer a more action-packed experience. It gets stressful sometimes trying to get ready, you know, to get open, but other than that, it's fun. I wouldn't, if it wasn't as much fun as it is, I wouldn't be doing it. If you are interested in coming to the Barn of Terror, it's located about 25 minutes north of campus and is open every Friday and Saturday from 8 p.m. to 12 a.m. and 8 to 10 on Halloween night. Be sure to come check it out before the season is over. For What's Up Weekly, I'm Carson Johnson. If you're interested in visiting the Barn of Terror, it's located about 25 minutes north of campus. Be sure to come check it out before the season is over. Now, Halloween is almost here, and we're creeping into spooky season with a little game of Guess What's in the Box. That's right. We're going to try to guess what objects are in each of these mystery bowls. And yeah, so all right, Anna. Let's see if we can guess this first. All right, one. let's do it. Should we bring it over? Yeah. So we're not going to look inside. Okay. And um, our director, Ella, put these together for us. And she says that the first one is intestines. So right. I'll go first. Okay. <laughs> okay, I think. What I've, do you think? I don't want to guess before you reach in. Okay, so I'll reach in. Oh. Hold on. Okay, I okay. think I know what it is. All right, what's Should your we say guess? it on three? Okay. okay. One, One two, two, three. Gummy, gummy worms. worms. And let's see if we were right. <gasps> oh, yes. 
Okay, I call that a win. Okay, so one, one of four so far. Okay, perfect. Okay. All right, let's move on. Now we're doing eyes. So let's see if we can, let's see if we can guess this. All right, you go first. Okay, I, yeah. You know. Yeah, I know. Okay. Okay. All right, ready? Oh, yeah, <laughs> that one wasn't too bad. Okay. All right, ready? One, one two, two, three. three. Ping, Ping pong, pong balls. balls. All right, two for two. We're so we're good We're doing this, good. Guys. All right, guys, our next one is live hands. This one's heavy. You can go first. Okay, I'll go first. Ready? Okay. I think I know what this is. You try. Okay, I have to say, this one is pretty, pretty creative. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't have thought to do that. Yeah, me either. Okay. Okay. One, two, two three. Latex gloves, gloves filled with water. water. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> oh, yeah. Everyone will take one out. Everyone. I feel like this was so crazy. I wouldn't have thought I know. of this. I, I've seen people do, like, popcorn, mm -hmm. but never water. Yeah. All right. Three for three. Let's see if we can get four for four. All right. Let's do it. Toes, guys. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, oh, <laughs> okay. Interesting. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. I hope these. If if it is what I'm thinking, <laughs> I hope they're clean. I hope they're not real. I know. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right, ready? One, One two, two, three. Fake, fake nails. nails. All right, four for four. Let's, we were yeah. right, okay. I was like, did someone pick these off? And like, <laughs> it was like, we need a last minute thing, like put them off. I was French like, French tip, fake nails. Oh yes. Ella really pulled all the stops for us. Oh yeah, I mean <laughs> it really, this does take me back to like the grade school Halloween parties and I loved playing these kind of games and we killed it, so. We did. That was awesome. Well, that's it for this year's spooktacular segment, but stick around because there's still a lot to come. Austin Rubin and Simon Mayer are back with another edition of the Bloomington Brief. And Halloween weekend is coming up quick. And if you don't have plans, we got you covered. Stick with us. Welcome back. Austin Rubin and Simon Mayer are back in studio with another edition of the Bloomington Brief. Guys, take it away. Thanks, Anna and Callie. Welcome to the Bloomington Brief. I'm Austin Rubin. And I'm Simon Mayer. Six women in neon green leotards attacked two New York subway riders. The women hope to have their criminal charges edited out in post-production. IU alumni Thomas Rank became the first person to marry a can of Mountain Dew on October 5th. Rank also made history by becoming the first person to honeymoon at GameStop. <laughs> Bloomington enacted a new curfew for e-scooter usage after two collision incidents. Finally, now drunk drivers can have a safe time getting home. <laughs> Piggybacking off that, uh, Bloomington's curfew on e-scooters means that no one will be allowed to ride a scooter at night to protect your safety, and no one will be allowed to ride a scooter during the day to protect your reputation. <laughs> a new study by Rockefeller University explains why mosquitoes are more attracted to some people than others. It turns out mosquitoes have a type. Women in neon green leotards who attack New York subway riders. <laughs> IU alumni Philip Divvig won the 2022 Nobel Prize in Economics. His banking research has been essential to the regulation of financial markets and handling unprecedented financial crises. So students, take a good look around you. You could be sitting next to the next Nobel Prize winner. Or a guy who's going to marry a can of Mountain Dew. <laughs> <laughs> My wig is gone. <laughs> You meant to say wig snatched. And yeah, that's this uh, week briefed. Anna and Callie, back over to you. You know, Anna, I think you could be a Nobel Prize winner. Oh, really? That's mm -hmm. so sweet. <laughs> we'll see. We'll, we'll see. see where the path goes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Even though Halloween isn't until next Tuesday, Monroe County has plenty of activities to keep you going this Halloween weekend. Here in studio is our What's Up Weekly reporter, Chloe Ferguson, to give us their top three activities. Chloe, what do you got for us? 
Thanks, guys. Our first event is fun for the whole family. The Monroe County Fair Board and the Monroe County 4-H Club are putting on trick-or-treating at the fairgrounds. This event is from 6 to 8 p.m. this Thursday, October 27th. There will be space to park on site and many community organizations, clubs, and businesses will be out passing candy. In need of a little spook, the Bloomington Storytellers Guild, the Monroe County Public Library, and Bloomington Parks and Rec are hosting the Festival of Ghost Stories at Bryan Park. Storytellers will gather on stage to recite ghost stories of old. And the festival isn't anything new. The earliest festival of ghost stories was in the 1970s. The ghosts will come back to life this Friday, October 28th at 7 p.m. And besides the Barn of Terror, there are other haunted attractions to visit this weekend. Located in Bedford, the Forbidden Hollows Haunted Farm is sure to leave your bones shaking. Just 20 minutes south of Bloomington, this haunted trail is open every Saturday from 8 to 10 p.m. Unlike other haunted attractions around, this one is the haunted trail through the woods. Entry tickets are only $20 a person. Anna and Callie, back to you. Thanks, Chloe. And that is what's up this week. Tune in next week for more local and entertainment news. Be sure to follow us on Instagram and Twitter at IUSTV News. You can find more on this week's stories at IUSTV.com. For What's Up Weekly, I'm Anna Black. And I'm Callie Lichter. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.